Hey all, Eric Christensen here from meded101.com. I just wanted to alert you guys, uh, BPS, so the Board of Pharmacy Specialties, has released uh, results from the fall of 2018. And um, so we can just kind of glance through the, the article here. Uh, 4,800 candidates uh, applied uh, to take um, certification exams. There's currently 11 different specialties. Um, I can let you read them on the BPS website there too. But uh, of note, you know, my, my background, I, I definitely have uh, significant experience with ambulatory care, uh, geriatrics, and um, pharmacotherapy, of course, as well. So you can see uh, the numbers here. Hopefully you can read my screen okay. But uh, Amcare, uh, pass rate 61%. Uh, that's pretty much on par uh, in the ballpark of where it's been in the, the past as well. Uh, we've got cardiology. That's a newer one uh, in the last uh, few years here, I believe. Uh, critical care, uh, definitely a more common one. Um, geriatrics. So you can see the numbers that, that each uh, take this exam. Uh, 436 candidates took it in uh, fall of 2018. So uh, overall, the rates of the numbers of people seeking board certification uh, is rising. And I, I think it's um, due to the uh, competitiveness of, of the job market, uh, as well as if you want to be involved clinically, uh, if you go look at any job postings, job applications for clinical type roles, you're going to see that a lot of uh, these situations, a lot of these uh, job opportunities uh, do, if not require it, they at least recommend that you have uh, this type of certification and or you know residency or specialty residency again kind of depending upon what the the position is i can speak from a geriatric perspective uh, there's definitely a lot of companies if you know they're looking for uh, long-term care consulting or you know really specific uh, geriatric uh, type setting um, i've definitely seen uh, job postings that require uh, like i said and or recommend um, geriatric certification so um, with the results, what really jumped out at me again um, was the BCGP being at a 39% pass rate for new candidates and even a 68% um, pass rate for those seeking recertification. So obviously the, the switch um, that's happened over the last year or two here uh, to under the BPS umbrella um, candidates are, are struggling with that for sure. So, um, yeah, that, that's a challenge. If, if you're taking uh, BCGP, you definitely better uh, look at that content outline, uh, study hard, and, and certainly be uh, um, prepared uh, because you're more likely to fail than, than pass. I, I didn't think I'd say that again after I think it was a 43% pass rate in spring of 18. Um, but here we are with an even lower number, a uh, lower pass rate for uh, the geriatric exam. Uh, infectious disease, a lot of people taking that uh, certification. Uh, we've got nuclear pharmacists, again, very um, kind of obscure certification where not many people take that one. Uh, nutrition, not too many people take that either. Uh, oncology, this is definitely one that's been growing um, pretty significantly and uh, pediatrics as well. So um, those, again, pass rates for all these exams, uh, 60%, you know, ballpark, give or take, um, is probably the, the most common range uh, that the pass rates are for these exams. So they are very, very difficult. And I always remind people that, you know, people that are looking to take these exams are probably generally people that you know, push themselves. They, they generally tend to maybe be more on the overachiever uh, type A side of things. Um, and yeah, with, with those pass rates, I would encourage you not to get uh, discouraged if you, if you do struggle, if you don't pass right away. Uh, you are not alone. You may feel that way, um, but definitely I've, I've heard from folks who've really struggled in, in passing. Uh, their exams and and it's it, it's a hard thing it's a hard thing for sure but you got to remember that a lot of other people are going to be in your same boat too and then we've got uh, psych as well down there 
Um, and then pharmacotherapy, I wanted to specifically mention uh, pass rates on that one, uh, kind of right in the usual average um, that we see, uh, that we have historically seen, kind of that low to, to mid 60% uh, pass rate. And you can see, uh, maybe I'll highlight it on the screen here, you can see the numbers of candidates that are taking uh, BCPS. And I would say this certification is probably the most broad. So if you don't know exactly maybe where in your career you want to go, that type of thing, um, the broadness of uh, BCPS, I think, really um, is a, a nice thing uh, for some people that may not be exactly sure um, what they want to, to specialize in. So, um, yeah, there's the results. You can go check them out on the BPS website. Um, I do try to try to follow these closely and, and pay attention as I do hear from people once in a while too. Um, I uh, do have some content available. You can check that out at meded101.com. Um, just from the, the main page here, you can see the first uh, drop down and um, pick your, your category. Uh, I have content for pharmacotherapy geriatrics and ambulatory care. Uh, those are definitely um, more up my alley and, and uh, specialty. Um, if you click uh, just on the pharmacist tab, so from just clicking on that pharmacist tab, you can see uh, I've got my entire uh, list of, of resources here, uh, as well as uh, kind words um, that people have uh, reached out and, and shared with me that I'm greatly appreciative of. So um, you can see the BCPS content, uh, geriatric content, ambulatory care, uh, NAPLEX as well. Uh, I've got a growing list of, of things there to, to obviously help uh, pharmacist students pass their exams. Uh, a couple of unique guides. Um, I've got a guide to long-term care consulting, which is basically recorded webinars on uh, teaching um, kind of the ins and outs uh, strategies to becoming a long-term care consultant and actually how to do it, which, um, yeah, it's kind of a unique little uh, niche there. And then with that, uh, I've got significant experience in, in writing uh, medication recommendations to uh, physicians, to nurses, to, to patients, and uh, really share a lot of my uh, kind of insider tips and uh, strategies I have uh, used personally and, and other strategies I've, I've seen used by um, other pharmacists as well. And then the books on Amazon, you can see those there. Uh, I've also got a couple of um, Audible books, so Pharmacotherapy and Thrill of the Case. Uh, that is a new revelation within the last uh, few months here of 2018. Uh, definitely a really neat way uh, to kind of learn um, clinical pharmacy and, and real world um, application of kind of some of that drug information uh, we learn as we're a, a growing professional. So I will leave a, a few links in the comments. Feel free to check those out. Uh, certainly reach out to me. Uh, LinkedIn is probably the, the platform I'm most active on. You can track me down there. Um, also, you can hit the, the contact button on the website here. Um, I can show you that. That's right under the About tab. Just hit Contact Me and um, shoot me an email with, uh, yeah, whatever's up, collaboration or questions or, um, you know, whatever you're, you're looking uh, to have uh, help with. So I'm going to sign off for today. Thanks so much for listening. I uh, hope you found this this useful, this helpful, um, interesting, and um, we'll sign off for today. Take care.